Hey Eurovision fans, it's time for another Eurovision 2024 news. We have our first images of the main stage concept for Eurovision 2024. We're gonna talk about how it looks and what we think. We also have some of the graphic art and theming for the contest as well. And we have a new number one at the top of the Eurovision odds and a lot more national final news. Let's keep it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So yesterday, the first pictures of the Eurovision stage dropped. So in case you don't know, this is pretty common around this time of the year that we'll get like a visual concept of what the stage is gonna look like, what the structure is gonna be, where the lights are, what it could look like when it's all lit up, etc. So let's check out the video that was released. I don't think I've seen this yet. So this is a first reaction. Ooh, exclusive. Wanna know my secret fan? Ooh, SVT. Drama. Oh, that drama. <laughs> okay, so it looks like these panels are able to move up and down, which is really cool. And the arena looks really small and compact, really intimate. Oh, I really like this song. <laughs> this song is so good. SVT having like a really good song in their clip. Oh, it's getting a bit more cheesy now. Okay, really cool. They've gone for the blue-pink color palette, which is really pretty. So it looks like a proper stage from the front. But once we get these later pictures, you're gonna see you can go around the back of the stage as well. So it really feels like the artist is right in the center. Look at that, that big plus sign. And you can see the crowd all the way around. It's almost like a boxing ring or WWE. Let's have a closer look at these pictures. So this first one, it looks like the arena is really close. So some arenas are really big. Like the first one I went to in Sweden in Globen Arena, it was quite large. And like all of them are much closer in person than they look on TV. But yeah, this looks really intimate. You can see even the people who are the farthest away have a really, really good view of the stage. So like every single person in the arena looks like they've got totally unobstructed view of whoever's on stage. <laughs> it's gonna be so good as a fan. This feels like a real fan orientated stadium. You're gonna be able to see everything at once. I wonder how they're gonna do all the transitions though, cause you know they run on and off between postcards, that's what the postcards are. They basically give the staff time to run onto the stage, take off whatever's there, the new person goes on. So they're gonna have to go through this walkway. We've got that big LED where you can see United by Music. So, okay, let's go to the second picture. And this is more if you're sitting at the back of the arena and you can see it just looks like a regular stage with a little bit of an extra mini stage out front. You've got a great view of the LEDs and then we've got all these panels on the roof, which I think will probably light up with the flag colors. So it looks like it's a five by five grid. Thing which I kind of like as well because it's five by five, which is 25 plus one on the, in the center. So it's almost like you've got the person performing in the center of the stage and then you have all other 25 finalists kind of watching them from above like guardian angels. That's, that's totally not what it was, but I just made it up and I like it. So let's just go with that. Yeah, again, it looks great. The, the sheer quantity of people in the standing area is gonna look so good. There's so many people who rag on Sweden for hosting. I love Sweden hosting. They really, really care about the fans. There's lots of Delhi broadcasters who could not give less of an F about the fans at all. SVD have given way more standing tickets than normal, really are prioritizing the atmosphere of your fans being there. I love SVD. I really do. I think they respect us and they, they like us. They think of us as like just a bunch of losers you know all passions are relative i think someone crying because their sports team is being relegated looks a bit ridiculous whereas that person probably thinks me fangirling over a stage is ridiculous it's all relative okay let's go to the third one and this one's really cool it just shows you this walkway that the staff are gonna have to go through when they do this swap over so they're gonna have to do a little bit of a sprint down this kind of like maybe 10 20 meter ramp to pick up any equipment that's on the main stage i assume some people are gonna have props Maybe they'll have to limit them. I don't know if there's a trap door in the floor that it can be lowered down from, or is there another way to remove stuff? I think they're going to have to run along, fetch it, run back. So they're gonna have to get some sprinters involved. Didn't uh, Thingy used to be a sprinter? Jan Ludwig used to be a sprinter, so maybe they can get him involved to sprint and help carry stuff off. But yeah, this looks incredible. And look at those lights coming down, almost like curtains or waterfalls. And then you can put patterns onto those lights absolutely stunning i love all this geometry as well there's like a lot of cube giving this like tesseract vibe like the movie interstellar so we've just got cubes within cubes and then it's giving this 3d effects so this looks incredible with this gorgeous led floor looks really really sharp colors and then on the top these boxes it looks like they've got leds on the side and on the under 
side as well. So I don't think you'd be able to project images onto them, but probably just more focusing on colors. The theme, which I'm gonna talk about later, which is Northern Lights. You can see a little bit of this Northern Lights effect there at the top with the blue and the pink melding into each other. So we're gonna have some beautiful kind of like sky effects there. And then again, we can see the LED at the back. And then this final image is someone who's got one of the seats at the side. The view is incredible. I really don't think there's gonna be any crap seats. Usually when you go to Eurovision, there's a couple of seats that are obstructed. My seat actually in semi-final number one of last year had an obstructive view. I had the camera that went whizzing around and sometimes it would just stop in front of me and just put up its big claw. <laughs> I just couldn't see for that song or half of the song and I had to wait for it to whiz away. It was just like willing it to go <laughs> away. But yeah, you can be unlucky with where the camera stood and I didn't pay less for that. That wasn't a restricted view seat. It was just a regular seat that had a big ass camera bot blocking me for half the songs. So yeah, look at this last one, really cool. You get a great Right image of the performer and also you get of the back screen. The delegations are going to have to be really conscious of the fact that they aren't just performing one way. Often when you go on the Eurovision stage the audience is over there and you're here you're performing in one direction. This year they're going to have to be trying to like address everyone like kind of not just have their back turned to some people for the entire show. So I imagine we're going to get a lot of people on kind of revolving plates trying to make a connection with everyone in the audience. Lots of people walking around, lots of things involving circles and circular movement, which is gonna be really cool because it's on top of all this geometric squares and this plus sign. Also shout out to Switzerland. Switzerland have to do something with the fact that this stage is in the shape of the cross of their flag. Whatever it is, they need to reference it in some way. We'll be talking about Switzerland later, by the way. The whole thing is really exciting, really innovative, new. It doesn't look too complicated, like the sun in Italy, looked really cool but it wasn't able to be done it was just too complex in the end this looks very feasible they'll definitely be able to get it completed we still got the led at the back but there's a little bit more of a focus on something a little bit more unusual i wonder is there a little bit of a line stage in front of the led it's kind of hard to tell from these pictures if there is actually a place that you can stand and perform in, in front of the led like could you walk along it is it maybe five meters wide could you perform there or is it literally just an LED wall going straight into the walkway. Overall though, I think this looks absolutely incredible. Like I think this is probably my favorite stage concept. We have to wait and see what the final thing is, but as a concept, it's my favorite one, probably since 2014, that giant cube. Again, I do like cubes. The reaction on Twitter was eerily positive. So usually when news is released on Twitter, Oh my God, it, no matter what it is, people hate it. They hate it and they find problems with it and they're digging holes in it. I saw nobody complaining about this, which is like, it's only gonna happen once in our lifetimes. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that often. This got universal acclaim. Everybody was loving it. I, I didn't even see, even from the Twitter community, I didn't see anything negative. That is groundbreaking. That's a job well done by SVT. Anyone who's got tickets, this is gonna be making them salivate. There's no bad seat in this arena. Okay, we also have the art and theme reveal. So we're gonna watch another video from SVT. SVT giving me all that delicious content. Want to know my secret bang? And we can see now Svea Television presents, and we can see these northern lights, really gorgeous. And then I mean, we've got this like beautiful stroke, kind of retro effect, nice simple font, nothing too risky with that and you can see how they've converted these northern lights into music so it's the equalizer for music so this connection between nature and the contest and we just got this lovely colorful stroke pack really really bright vibrant colors uniting everyone under the same sky to the same melody really lovely simple theming looks really really great lots of color Ooh, you see a bit of mix up in the theming here they're going to change the colors around they can do a lot of color blocking easy to make the flags from each country and then this final image. Yeah, th now, <laughs> here's a great example of the Twitter community. This didn't go down as well. I really like it. Like, it's it's not mind-blowing to me. I like the Northern Lights theme. I think that's something really, really super cool. It is a little bit ironic, though, because Malmö is the southernmost big city in Sweden. <laughs> and they've chosen a Northern Lights theme. Like, Northern Lights are gorgeous. I tried to see them when I was in Iceland, 
and I was unlucky, it was too, too cloudy, I couldn't see them. It's a very a mystical, magical phenomenon. They'll be able to do loads of like cool, fun, interesting concepts with it. And then I like this idea of how they, they found the pattern matching in the Northern Lights, the way these uh, lines are dancing in the sky, and they connected that with an equalizer, which represents music. So really, really cool connection there. I like how this looks. I like the vibrant colors. The line thing I think is gonna be the main. For this, I imagine it's that top image is gonna be made into the country color colors and that might be what we see before the show starts. Okay, so we have an example here from flowers underscore EMA12, who I featured on the channel before. They just changed their username. And um, <laughs> that's why I couldn't find them on Twitter. And you can see it's I support Slovenia. So you can see how this can be adapted. Now this is a fan made one. So obviously one that's done by SVT will be a little bit like more expensive looking. You get an idea of how these blocks can be customized to give the feel for each country. So yeah, I, overall I think it's fine. I I'm, I'm don't love it, I don't hate it at all. I have a huge amount of faith in SVT, so I trust the process and I think that what we get in the final thing will look really cool. So who's gonna be hoisting the trophy on the plus size stage? And according to the bookies at this moment in time, we have a new number one and that is the UK. Ali Alexander, I did a video about him being announced as the artist for the UK this year. A lot of people advising me to watch his mini series, It's a Sin, which I absolutely binge watched. I think I watched the whole thing in a day and a half. Really amazing show, he's a fantastic actor. He has gone to number one in the arts. Now obviously it's so early in the season, we have two songs, eight artists announced, we have so little information, it's pretty meaningless. But if you said to me, would you wanna be number one in the ads or not? I would say yes or rather. So yeah, it's a good sign. If you're gonna release your artists, definitely would want them to go to number one. That shows all the hype behind them. It's also showing a little bit of faith in the British delegation that they're on a pretty hot streak with their decision making, being organized, their visual concepts in both adult and junior year vision. So uh, yeah, it's more than just Ali Alexander. I think if Ali had been announced for someone who have not a great staging record, for example, like Austria, I think you probably wouldn't be able to make such a big jump. Yeah, but right, right now odds are pretty meaningless. I don't think many people are gonna want to, to bet money when they don't have any information. Like you could bet on, on Italy and then it turns out all the Italian songs are terrible this year and you've just wasted a ton of money. So there's so little money being placed on the betting markets right now that even a small bet can really make someone jump up quite a lot. Obviously you take it with a pinch of salt, don't take it too seriously. Take a screenshot, enjoy this moment. If you're a British Euro fan, get the screenshot framed and put it above your bed. So we also have some breaking news from Albania. So their national final festival of Kungus has completed. The televote winner there was Bessa. And so she will go to Eurovision 2024 to represent Albania. Her song loosely translates as a heart in the hand. It's another powerful female ballad from Albania. They definitely love those. I've actually already filmed my reaction to that. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to post it tomorrow to you as a very delicious Eurovision Christmas present. But I'll have to see. I don't want to get in too much trouble with the relatives for spending too much time on my laptop. So I watched the whole final of Festival of Kungas this year. It's actually not too bad of a show. The ad breaks are very long, but it's got this very unusual format where the jury pick a winner who is the winner of Festival of Kungas, the festival. This year it was a guy called Mal who had a really cool looking butcher gladiator muscle costume, which a lot of people were fans of, but him winning was a massive, massive shock. Like literally one of the most shocking things I've ever seen in a national final ever. All of us on Twitter were like, what the absolute F just happened? He came out of absolutely nowhere. Really confusing. Nobody had him as their favorite song. He was really low down in the Eurovision rankings as well. Just came out of absolutely nowhere. He was second in the running order. Really confusing result. So that was the winner chosen by the jury. And then the televote chose Besa and their system is that the televote winner is the person who goes to Eurovision. So the actual production quality of the show isn't that bad. It's pretty entertaining to watch. They've got a nice stage. They've got some cool LEDs. A lot of the artists put a lot of effort into their costume. And Mal is a handsome guy with an amazing body. Like a lot of people on Twitter were commenting about him because of his physique before, but I heard, I saw absolutely nobody commenting on the song or its potential to win. And I saw afterwards that a lot of people were consoling El Elsa Lila, who was a big fan favorite. She didn't come top three in the jury, nor did she get the Eurovision ticket. And she was saying that she thinks that the system is correct. So I think Festival of Kunk still has a long way to go 
They need to sort themselves out in many facets before they're going to start pumping out the quality that they need to succeed in your vision. Okay, next up, we've got some news from Dora. So Dora is the Croatian national final and they are expanding to have two semifinals. So this is the first time that Dora will have semifinals since 2010. Usually we just have a big ass final. Instead, we're gonna have two big ass semifinals and then a big ass final. So we have 24 hours in Dora all together. So it'll be 12 in each semifinal. I'm not sure how many are qualified. My guess would be eight. 8 and 8, 16 in the final. Generally, national finals from Serbia and Croatia, for some reason, they tend to be bigger than Northern European ones. But we've got some big names in here. So first of all, Let3, with a song called Baba Roga. They're coming back. Obviously, they represented them last year and came 13th. There is a couple of stories going around. Some people flagged this to me on Twitter about the lead singer of Let3 saying that this is a prank. They didn't submit a song. Someone hacked their account stole the song and submitted them for them. I don't know, I just presume that's like a little bit of a joke for publicity because I would presume that the producers from Door have to call you and say, hey, you won, you're gonna be on the show. And then they have to go, yes, I am let three. I sent in a song, thank you. See you in February. So yeah, I doubt that they're just gonna publish the list without having any communication with them whatsoever. So I presume it's just like a little bit of a joke. But yeah, really looking forward to them coming back. I don't know what Baba Roga means. Oh, interesting. Okay, Baba Roga. So I know Baba Yaga, which I think is a Russian witch, but Baba Roga is a Bosnian Herzegovinian boogeyman that is said to be an old, ugly woman, like a hag. Okay, cool. Oh, so that's a really cool title. <laughs> We've already got a witch song from Slovenia. Maybe we're going to get another witch song from Croatia. Maybe all of the former Yugoslav countries are going to have witch songs. The other obvious big name is Damer Kedzo. He's got a song called Voljena Zenyo. So he won in 2020, but he couldn't go because of COVID. And then he didn't come back in 2021. He came back in 2023. He came fifth last year with a song called Angels and Demons, which I didn't think was particularly great. He's not going to get a free pass. He didn't get the free pass last year. He didn't even come second. He came fifth. Yeah, I'd like it if he had a strong song. I'd love him to get his moment, a little bit of redemption. That would be cool. Okay, some other names to watch out for are Shasha. Again, sorry, I don't speak any serbo croat so I don't know how to pronounce any of these names or words. Probudi Ujne Moje. Shaja has had a lot of top five singles. I think she's from X Factor, Adria. And so she's pretty big. Also, thank you to Oceanito. But she was telling me that the other names to watch out for are Vatra, who are a band, and also ET, who are a Euro dance band who had huge success during the late 90s and noughties. And then also Sasha Lozar, who is also quite famous, even though he's not really doing much music lately. And then she thinks he was also in a boy band with Damir when they were starting up their careers in the early noughties. So that's some really obscure potential trivia. So yeah, really good, lots of cool names. And it's promising that they said that they opened up the semifinals because there were more submissions than normal and the quality went up. So that's a great sign they said, okay, there's so much good stuff here. We need semifinals. Love that. Okay, let's take a short hop over to Serbia. And we have the 28 acts announced for Pesmaza Eurovision 2024. So there's going to be 14 contestants in each semifinal. And we'll have 16 in the final. And the big news here is that we have Constracta. One of the big fan favorites from 2022 is back. And her song means new, better. So I think she's going to be making another social commentary about how this culture of buying new things and whatnot, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be really thoughtful and interesting. So really excited to see what she's got. We've also got a couple of contestants that you might remember from last year. So Zenia, who last year had a song called Rumba. Philip Balosh, who was a huge fan favorite last year. He's back again. Nadia, who you might remember last year having a kind of Avril Lavigne style performance. Filari, who had his washing up gloves. And then Milan Bujakovic, who I don't really remember from last year, but he's back again. We also have a junior Eurovision alumni in Boyana. She's doing a duet, Boyana and David. She was in junior Eurovision 2018. So she's taken a step up to the big leagues. And then we also have Theodora, who is an artist who had a really super viral song in Serbia last year. So I've seen a lot of Serbian people really excited about her. Generally, all the Serbians I know on Twitter are super excited about this. They say that it's the strongest lineup they've ever had. We've seen that the amount of submissions has gone up. With that, more and more people are getting interested in Pesmaze Eurovision. It really feels like one of the national finals that's growing the most right now. So 
really excited for the release of these 28 songs i think sometime in january for me this is a sign that pesma as a year visual is growing their base they're treating the artists well they're letting them look good on the stage generally the artists are having a good experience and this national final is growing so i really really like to see that and it also kind of shows how you do need to grow a national final over several years and you need innovative leadership they've been really innovative in what they've been doing and you can see this growth and i think if this continues i think serbia are going to become closer and closer to getting that second win their first one was in 2007 so i feel like of all the balkan countries they're the most likely to get a win in the coming years okay we've got some news and some gossip about switzerland so first up for the news section from eurovision insider saying that there are five participants left in this internal selection for switzerland song so the songs have been recorded in the srf the song is going to be released in march so pretty standard switzerland usually releases their song at the start of march with a music video we also have some rumors about switzerland and this is from eurovision faith who flagged this up to me on twitter someone posted on reddit decent background underscore 42 that they may have been in an online poll for the internal selection for the Swiss song. So again, this is absolutely not a rumor. It does sound kind of plausible. So this person was saying that they were paid to do an online survey and they were told, imagine that you are watching song on the night of the Eurovision final, what do you think? And then they were shown five songs. They had to turn their webcam on so that the people watching them could see their reaction. And then they had to just say what they thought about each of the five songs. And the key part here is they said, one song I can say is especially beautiful. I'm afraid to say anything more. This could be BS, but it also sounds kind of plausible to me. That sounds like the type of thing that the Swiss delegation would do. We know that they have this system where they get a, an internal panel and then they have like a fan panel and they get lots of opinions from lots of different people trying to get a feel for like what sound works, what gets the best reaction from lots of different demographics. So it kind of makes sense that they would also do this. They want to see, okay, we want to step outside of this Eurovision bubble and see what the general public think because other people are voting on the night of the Eurovision final. And this kind of sounds like a good way to do it. You have to type in like who you are, what age group you are, your gender, and they will say, okay, does this resonate with 50 to 64 year old men? And then they might show it to them and see how they react. Take it with a pinch of salt, but still the fact that one of the songs could be especially beautiful is kind of cool. And the second part, someone asked, if you did listen to Switzerland songs, can you at least say if Switzerland is going the sad boy ballad route again? So we've had a lot of sad boy ballads from Switzerland recently, which I think have been really great. Remo Ferrer last year. Then we had John's Tears twice. Uh, 22 with Marius Bear, which is also very sad. And then, yeah, and then if you go back, we had uh, Luca Hani in 2019. That was our last non-sad song. We haven't had a lady represent Switzerland in a while either. And the answer was nope. So apparently these aren't sad boy songs. We don't know if it's a male or a female. They didn't want to say too much because they didn't want to get themselves in trouble. And we've actually got some breaking news from the head of delegation of Switzerland, Eve Schiffer. <laughs> <laughs> let's just not say his surname and he's confirmed some of this story by saying that switzerland are not sending a male ballad this year so this also starts making me think that the rest of that post from reddit could have been correct as well so also keep in mind that we had a message from Taya, Taya from Taya and selena of austria last june saying that she also had potentially heard the swiss song this year and she also thought it was beautiful so this is quite a few people now who are rumoring to have heard the swiss song and really enjoying it and all this news cumulatively has led to switzerland jumping up the odds big time so on the 20th of december they were 21st and then just after the head of delegations posts now they're up to ninth in the odds moving up 11 spots into the top 10 is really cool and exciting for switzerland i hope this very beautiful song does get picked and we get to hear it probably sometime in early march so in any case kind of interesting to get an insight into how the swiss des delegation potentially chooses this song i think that's actually quite a clever strategy if you want to test out your song without it being leaked paid survey that you can track that's a good way to do it okay next up talking about romania we still don't have any confirmation yet about romania we have heard that their budget has been approved so a lot of the romanian fans are hopeful that romania will be able to be the 38th country at eurovision 2024 we now know that the allocation draw is going to happen on January 30th. This probably implies that the deadline for Romania to commit to Eurovision is probably January the 30th at 7 CET. So in case you don't know, the selling final allocation draw is where all countries are put into pots based on their geographical location and voting patterns. And then they're spread out into the first and second half 
of the first and second semi-finals. I love watching the allocation draw. I think it's kind of fun and cute to watch. Last year, the BBC made it into a primetime thing. They put it at like seven o'clock. They made it like into an entertaining show because in the past it was quite drab, kind of boring, unnecessary speeches. SVT are continuing that tradition. They're keeping it in a primetime slot. But yeah, I think realistically, Romania would have to give an answer by then. It's already quite late. They've already been given quite a big extension. If Romania don't announce then, it gets messy in terms of how you save them a place. Where do you save them a place? In the first half or the second half? In the first or second semi? And then people can start saying, oh, well, they're being given a favorable draw if they get put in a better semi or in the second half. I think it gets too messy. I think the EBU were going to say, okay, you've had loads of time. January 30th is the absolute limit. Okay, a little bit of news about Slovenia. So Raven has been announced. I already did a video talking about her. I first of all need to make a little bit of a correction from that video. The, her song Veronica is about witchcraft. So I typed in Slovenia, Veronica, witch myth. And I got an answer, and that is the witch myth that I read out to you in that video. It's the wrong Slovenian Veronica witch myth. There's another one. Who would have thought there would be two of them? But yes, that one I told you about, which is where she was greedy and she turned into a serpent, is the wrong one. The one that Raven is going to be singing about is a different Veronica who was the first woman accused of witchcraft in Slovenia. She was found innocent, but they killed her anyway. Kind of a, still a very sad story. I didn't want to take down that entire video just because of that. I put a pinned comment to correct myself. But yes, I just wanted to correct myself here. That is the correct Slovenian Veronica witch myth. So more news about her song is that she's not going to be playing her harp. No, for now there's no harp in Veronica. I was thinking about it, but honestly, I have such bad stage fright when it comes to playing harp that I rarely play it live for an audience. I like to play it at home. I love to experiment with different sounds and different effects, but I'm just get very nervous when it comes to playing harp. I've had this horrible stage fright since I was little with it and it's just so different than when I'm on stage singing. Um, but maybe I'm gonna do an acoustic version or something like that with some cool effects. And I actually replied and said, does she know that they're not playing? I think some artists don't realize they're not playing their instruments on stage. It's all playback. If her only reason not to do it is anxiety, she's going to be faking anyway. It could look really cool. And then someone replied under my comment with an idea of like the harp playing itself the same way that Alika did in Bridges, where the piano was playing itself, which would look really cool. I think that would look amazing if she was playing the harp and then she wandered away in a flowy dress and then someone else was playing the harp. And do you remember in 2016 when Yvette and Makuchan had the on-screen effect of splitting apart? We could have an on-screen ghost playing the harp. It would be so good. <laughs> That would be so cool, like the the ghost of Veronica coming on to play the harp while Raven wanders away. Stop, that's a moment. That is a moment. I hope that she plays the harp again. I think it would sound really, really pretty. Cool way to break up the song as well in the breakdown just before the final course. Okay, let's look at a couple of the polls from the community tab on my page. So if you go to my page and then you go to the community section, you can find these. The first question I asked was, is your favorite song from Easty Lao amongst the 15 semi-finalists or the five automatic finalists? And and 90% of people had their favorite song in the semi-finalist. Very much supporting the general mood, which is that the jury, they didn't pick those songs. They only gave rankings from zero to five for each song. But the songs that ended up getting the highest scores probably just got a lot of threes and fours because they were inoffensive. Whereas the more divisive songs probably got a lot of fives, but then a lot of zeros. So a lot of people having their favorite song amongst the semi-finalists. So it's going to be a bit of a bloodbath. Only five of those 15 semi-finalists going through. Still, I might have to look at this system next year. The second question I asked was, which Eurovision 2024 artist internally selected song are you most excited for? Keeping in mind that this was before the announcement of Ali Alexander, I think he definitely would have won this poll. So we can see 42% of people have Yoast, 30% have Raven, 15% from Marina Sati, 8 from Musti, and Silly Capsis only with 3. I've got to admit, I'm genuinely excited for all five of those. And I can kind of see why Silly is in fifth place. I would probably put her fifth as well, but I'm still super psyched for her song, like 100% looking forward to it. I don't think it's that people aren't excited for Celia. I just think the standard of all five of these artists is really exciting. Okay, final little story. I just wanted to give a shout out to Benidorm Fest. I think their graphics are absolutely so amazing. And these are the 16 little icons which each song will have this year. I think Benidorm Fest has some of the best graphic art and this feels similar to last year, but a little bit elevated, a little bit different, so it's not a copycat. 
but I love this idea that each song gets its own little cute Pokemon-like emblem. And I love these national fonts which are pu really pushing the limits of graphic design. Last year, Serbia, Pesma, Zayovic, you had fantastic graphics. Benzorm Fest this year already setting the bar really, really high. Okay, that's all the Eurovision news for today. What did you think about all of that delicious, juicy, delicious, delicious gossip? Leave me a spicy comment in the comment section down below. Thank you to Big J Dizzle. That's one hell of a name. And also to Christy for supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. Nothing new on PayPal or Super Thanks, but you can support the channel there as well. I'll leave links for you in the description. But as always, thank you so much just for watching the channel. And of course, a thank you to all of my patrons all over the world for patronizing me. On my Patreon, you can see the copyright free versions of my videos. For example, my Better Arm Fast video with all the original audio, sneak previews about what's coming up, and you get access to my My Eurovision Scoreboard group. All the patrons we have our little my Eurovision scoreboard group together so you can see how we're scoring things. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. God, Twitter sucks so bad. I hate it on that.